So I'm going to call this one a post build review while I do a little bit of stuff. An Italian machine that doesn't leak. That is one of my goals. This is the only thing left. I don't have any drips along the bottom. I don't think. Nothing's piling up behind the cylinders on the base of the block like it used to. Nothing's building up down here where it flows down. So, so far, so good. It's a little warm. I just got back from a 94 mile run. I'm gonna call it post timing adjustment run. Worked great. I didn't get any pinging. Of course, I'm still running some residual, residual octane booster in there. Sorry. I just want to let y'all know that I don't rehearse anything. There's no way to rehearse this because I don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes it works out great. Sometimes it's a Ducati. And you have to make it up as you go along. So, no, there's no rehearsing. There's a little bit of editing on the back side where I delete most of the foul language that I'm prone to use when working on stuff. But, no, I don't sit down and write a script. How could I? It's not possible. So, most of y'all enjoy it. But, you know, recently one of y'all did not. So if you don't like it, go somewhere else, bro. That's all I can tell you. I'm not your personal YouTube provider. There's plenty more available. But I digress. Okay, so we'll run that and see what happens. What I wanted to talk about was some of the things to consider before you start diving into this. So I ordered the big toolkit from HDESA. So we needed this for the pulleys. We need this to spin the motor around for when we're dialing in the camshafts. We needed this to pull the side cover off. We needed this to take these nuts off. You use this on the heads to hold the spring while you're messing around with the valves. This tool, I don't know what it is. I never used it. And then there's this tool, and I don't know what it's for, but you can use it on the other side of the motor to torque stuff down on that flywheel and stuff. You'll need a piston stop. I just made my own. So this is a spark plug. You got to chip away at that porcelain for a while, and then you finally get rid of it, and then run a M8 by 125 down there. And then you've created your own piston stop. Definitely going to need some Yama Bond or 3 Bond or your sticky gasket material of choice. The Permatex. Uh, you know, this stuff still flows. And it's not all clogged up at the tip. So... That's why I chose it. 
because it lasts longer than one day. By now, you should have been able to watch all of the videos that I made, taking the engine out, taking the engine apart, splitting the cases, replacing that oil galley plug, putting in the new pistons and rings and putting the jugs in, the valve jobs, the valve lapping, the works, right? We dialed in the cams, 106, 106.5, put the BST wheels on there. What made the biggest difference mechanical wise overall, in my opinion, was the degreeing of the cams. That's something you can do without having to drop the engine. You're going to have to take the battery tray out so you can get to the top. But that little micrometer holder fits right here. So you could degree the cams while it's still in the bike and set those up. It was so smooth the first time it started. I mean, just click on the money, go. No popping through the carbs, no rough idle or anything that like that, waiting for it to warm up. And then every time after that, it's been a perfect start. These FCRs don't have carb or chokes. So, you know, there's a little bit of manipulating in there. But once the camshafts were lined up closer together on the center lines, I mean, it, it, it went good. Performance wise, overall, those BST wheels, you will notice a distinct difference in the way this machine handles and performs with lighter wheels. Now, don't take my word for it. I've shared that video from Brad where he talks about Ducati modifications and he you know, one of the number one things he recommends is the wheels. You're going to pay $5,000 for a motorcycle. You're going to spend all this money hot rodding it. But the wheels are going to make a huge difference. So, now that I've done it, I love it. Uh, my modifications to this BST wheel to make it fit. This 17 millimeter axle are still working. I haven't had any problems. I'm up to about 350 miles after rebuild. So we're kind of beyond the point where if something was gonna fail, it would have failed already. I ride this thing like a pissed off teenager sometimes. So 9, thousand ten thousand eleven thousand rpm are not out of the question and everything is holding together no funny noises or anything to worry about other than i had a little leak drip right there but that should be taken care of now i got a seal and some yama bond on there I still like the idea of running open belts, but with as much stuff as I do to this thing on a regular basis, I can still line up my marks. I know my used nuts are not backing out. Uh, somebody berated me for not replacing these with new nuts, but I had to take this one off four times before I figured out how to get this pulley on there the way I wanted it. So what's the point? Loctite, mark it. I could paint it if I want, but if I see any movement, we'll, we'll talk about that later. For now, 350 miles later, they're not moving. I might mark them again, but you know, we'll see. I'm still running my break-in oil in there with my used oil filter from the previous trip. So, I mean, it only had 300 something miles on it before I broke this thing. So 
as far as break in, I'm going to put about 150 more miles on it and then we'll change the oil. I have gone back and retorqued these six mil bolts. I probably need to check the exhaust, make sure it's tight. Let's just do that right now. These exhaust flanges got lock washers on them, but you know, sometimes. No, we're good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's give it a fire up. It's been a while. This time, dummy. So I think we got it sorted. We'll have to monitor that and see. What is that? I don't know. I didn't do that. Interesting. So what's next? I don't know. I think probably what I could do is go get that spare motor, take it apart. We could build the bottom end, get the lighter flywheel, get the Carrillo rods, get the crank balanced. I'm sure the oil galley plug is going to need to be replaced anyway. So do all that, and then we could switch out the top end. Boom, boom. But for now, I'm just going to ride it. I'm going to ride it like it's stolen. I'm going to ride it like a pissed off teenager, and I'm going to have some fun. So thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day.